Hey Storyteller! While writing your story, have you ever wondered which font is the best one to use or how to indicate a scene break? Are there rules for this sort of thing? Yes, the publishing industry has developed over the years a long-standing set of requirements called Standard Manuscript Format. Whether you plan to self-publish or seek traditional publication, this is a crucial step in your story's creation you shouldn't skip. Please note, we're not talking about making your story's pages look the way they will once your book is published. That is called interior formatting. The techniques we're talking about today will help you prepare your manuscript to be edited and eventually to be used in formatting your book for publication, either by sending it to a typesetter or uploading it to an application or a tool that will make the pages look the way they will when it's published. Welcome to this week's writer coaching session, in which we'll discuss why using standard manuscript formatting is so important and what its requirements include. Plus, I'll show you how to set all this up in Microsoft Word, the publishing industry's preferred word processing software, and I'll demonstrate how to avoid or correct several common formatting mistakes. Hi, I'm Bridget from B Squared Writer Coaching. I'm an author, editor, and your story coach, here to help you make your story powerful, polished, and publishable. First, I have a gift for you just for visiting my channel, my free workshop, Six Essential Elements of a Powerful Story. You can format your story to perfection, but if it's not powerful, it won't hold the interest of readers or publishers. This 25-minute video workshop is packed with tips on how to ramp up your characters, plot, conflict, setting, theme, plus how to write all this in a way that makes readers feel like they're living the adventure with your characters. Just click the link in the description or visit b2writercoaching.com workshop. That's the letter B, the number two, writercoaching.com slash workshop to access it today. And be sure to stick around till the end so you won't miss this week's Power Up, a super practical action step you can take right now in the story you're working on. Why is standard manuscript format vital to your story's publishing potential? If you're planning to submit your novel or memoir to literary agents or traditional publishers, formatting your manuscript according to industry standard guidelines is essential. Agents and publishers will reject a manuscript instantly if it doesn't follow their submissions guidelines, and most of those guidelines follow standard manuscript format. However, before submitting, be sure you check each agent's or publisher's guidelines to make sure they haven't required something in addition to what we'll cover today. But why do you need all this if you plan to self-publish or haven't decided which publishing path to take yet? Using standard manuscript format will make working with a freelance editor much easier. And I do recommend hiring a freelance editor if you do decide to self-publish because this person will be your only line of defense to protect against typos, grammar mistakes, and other writing craft issues that the editor at a publishing house or a literary agent would normally catch for you. Also, when it is time to prepare your book for publication, the document settings included in standard manuscript format will make certain that your manuscript is compatible with the requirements of typesetters if you do hire an interior formatter or with the software and tools we can use to format the interior of our books. If we don't use these parameters, the manuscript's formatting can get messed up. Wondering which tool you should use to format your book's interior for publication? Stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you my recommendation. I encourage you to take notes or save this video so you can watch it again later in case you do find formatting issues in your manuscript. That way you'll have an easy reference to know how to correct those issues. What does the publishing industry recommend or require in terms of formatting our manuscripts? First, the font should be Times New Roman and the size should be 12 point. For line spacing, we should use double spacing and make certain we don't have space before or after paragraphs. If you're writing a novel or memoir, the first line of every paragraph should be indented a half inch or 0.5 inches. This is also true if you're writing a short story or anecdote, whether that's fiction or nonfiction. Basically, if what you're writing is a story, indent your paragraphs. Margins should be set to one inch on all sides, so that includes left, right, top, and bottom. And if your chapters include multiple scenes, or if you're writing a short story that is divided into scenes instead of chapters, for scene breaks, you'll want to use either the pound symbol, an asterisk, or a tilde, and you'll want to put three of those with a space between and center them on a line by themselves. 
And if you are submitting to traditional publishers, here are a few extra guidelines. Chapter titles should begin one third of the way down the page and the chapter title should have some space between the title and the body of your story. Also, chapter numbers and titles should be in all caps. And your manuscript should have a header at the top with the author's name, a slash, the book title in all caps, another slash, and your word count. And the page number should also be in the top on the right. I have seen suggestions that the header be flush left and the page number is on the right. I have also seen it suggested that the entire header is shifted to the right side of the page. Check with your publisher or literary agent and see what their guidelines suggest before submitting. Each one can be a little different. When we're formatting our manuscripts for submission to traditional publishers or literary agents, or when we're going to work with editors, it's important to avoid several formatting mistakes. First, avoid adding extra space or blank lines between paragraphs or surrounding scene breaks. Make sure that you don't have any extra indentation in your margins beyond the one inch margin that's supposed to be on all sides. When indenting paragraphs, don't use the space bar or tab key to indent. Use the line spacing settings in Microsoft Word to do this automatically. Likewise, don't use the space bar or tab key to center your chapter titles or scene breaks either. Avoid using fonts other than Times New Roman 12 point for chapter titles and subtitles or anything else in your manuscript. I know it can be fun to use a fancy font, but save that for formatting the interior of your book instead of when formatting the manuscript. If you're creating a file that you're going to turn into a PDF and use that for the interior of your actual book if you're self-publishing, then it's okay to use different types of fonts and, and font sizes. But when you're formatting your manuscript to submit to publishers or if you're working with editors, be sure to use Times New Roman 12 point font. And if you're uploading your manuscript to formatting software, Software, this font works very well with all software. It doesn't cause any glitches. And finally, if your chapter has ended and it's time to move on to the next chapter and you still have space at the end, don't hit the enter key a bunch of times to move to the next page. You would want to insert a page break using Microsoft Word's tools for that instead. Do you have any questions about what we've covered so far? If so, be sure to leave a comment and I'll get back to you. I always respond to every comment. And if you're finding this helpful, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss future writer coaching sessions. And I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and that will let YouTube know that other writers may like this topic as well. Now let's go to my computer and I'll show you how to set all this up in Microsoft Word. Here we are inside my Microsoft Word. Just a quick note before we get started, I am using a Mac. So if you use a PC or you have an older version of Microsoft Word, your interface may look slightly different, but for the most part, everything will be still located in the same places. Also keep in mind that the placement of the buttons may not change, but how much you see at a time can depending on how wide your window is. If your window is full screen, you're probably going to see everything, but if you narrow it, some of the buttons may have drop down arrows. For example, this styles panel may be compressed. You may see only one or two of these with the little arrow next to it to go on to the next group. Let's just go through our basic setup in Microsoft Word for a second. We have all these tabs that go across the top here. We call those ribbons. When you switch tabs, it changes which tools show up here in this part of the window. But we're in the home ribbon right now. And in that we have several tools for our font, our font size, whether it's bold, italics, underline, strike through, some things for the case, the capitalization, the highlight color, if you want to highlight the text color. And then over here we have bulleted lists, numbered lists, and other formatting parameters. This is our set of alignment tools. So aligned left, centered, aligned right, justified. And this icon is for line and paragraph spacing. We'll be using this one a lot today. Okay, before we get started in formatting a sample of manuscript, I thought I would show you an example of what a document can look like when it's in standard manuscript format. This is the first page of chapter one from my novel Keeper of Shadows. So at the top you see we have our header with my last name, book title in uppercase, and the word count 
all these separated by a slash with no spaces. And then on the top right, we have the page number. The reason it's showing up here on the first page is because we needed to make sure that the publisher had all the identifying information right away. Now, if you are going to include a title page, of course, the header and page number will be set to not show up on page one. And I'll show you how to do that when we format the header in our sample. I won't focus today on how to create a title page because though there is sort of a standard format for title pages for manuscripts, not every publisher requires or wants one. And if you're working with editors, sometimes editors want a title page, sometimes they don't. It just depends on who you're working with. So I would suggest consulting your publishing company or literary agents submission guidelines and if you're working with an editor, ask the editor whether that person wants you to include one or not. Also, if you're working with a book formatter and you're sending your Microsoft Word document over to be formatted for publication, some formatters may not want title pages, table of contents, or other front matter included in the manuscript document because it can throw off any application they may be pulling that document into to uh, prepare the pages for the interior of your book. All right, just moving on with our example here, our chapter title doesn't start until about a third of the way down the page. I'll scroll so you can see how far that actually is. And then our paragraphs are all indented. We have a space between the chapter title and the beginning of the body of the first chapter. Everything here is double spaced. So this blank spot here between the title and the body is actually just one empty line. And in order to see this, I'm going to turn on a tool that I think is super handy when you're formatting and when you're editing. So if you look up here, this one that looks like a little paragraph symbol that you might see when people would proofread by hand or even electronically, sometimes this symbol will show up meaning you need a new paragraph. This is a handy tool that will help you see what's really going on behind the scenes in your document is to show or hide invisible characters. And if you click on it, it's going to show the invisible characters and you can tell that you've clicked on it because its background is a little darker. And so what we can see here is all these little paragraph symbols in blue the characters in blue are the invisible characters that it's showing. These are actually what we call hard returns. That means I've hit enter to create a new line or a new paragraph. And so I've done that and these are double spaced. I'll just highlight that you can see that I only have one hard return here between our chapter title and our body. Okay, so we have indentation here for our paragraphs and you'll notice we don't have any extra space between our paragraphs. It's just double spaced like everything else and everything's indented. And then down here at the bottom, we have this symbol indicating a page break. That means that anything that comes after this symbol will show up on a new page. So that's just a sample of how standard manuscript format should look once you have completed all the steps involved. I'm going to close this and go right to our sample. The first thing that I advise anyone to do as they're starting to format their document is to check your margin settings. But before we do that, I'm going to be showing you a few keyboard shortcuts today that will really be helpful, not only in formatting your document, but in your entire writing journey. And the first of those is how to select your entire document. Before you change your margins, you will definitely want to have your entire document selected so that you don't have some margins set one way and somewhere down the line it's set with some other parameters. And the way you can select your entire document is to, if you're on a Mac, hold the command key down and press the letter A. If you're on a PC, hold control down and the letter A, and that is how we select all, so A for all. And as you can see in our sample document, we have everything selected that's in the file. Then we're going to go up to the layout ribbon and our margin icon is here. And if an icon has the little arrow next to it, that means there are more tools hidden inside it. That's a little drop down arrow. So we wanna click that. And the highlighted setting is how our margin is set for this document. So mine is set to normal, which is one inch on all sides. And that is the correct setting for our margins in standard manuscript format. If we needed a different setting, we could just select that setting and it would change the margins for our entire document. Normal is the default for Microsoft Word, but it's a good idea to always check just to be sure. And while we would want to have our entire document selected when we change our font, which we'll do in a moment, I'm going to deselect it right now just so we can look and see what we're working with. So let's go back to the home ribbon. And here we have our font and our font size. Now our font for standard manuscript format is supposed to be set at Times New Roman and the size to 12 point. 
we can see we've got a couple different things going on with font. In the first page, we have a different size for our chapter number and title than we do for the body. And if we scroll down to our pretend chapter two, we also have a different font for the chapter title. So that's not appropriate for standard manuscript format. Uh, just to see what we are actually using, let's scroll up. And if I highlight some text, I can see that I'm using Calibri Lite and a 16 point font size for the chapter title here. For our body, we have Calibri Light and 11 point. And then down here, everything should be the same, Calibri Light 16, but this is a different font altogether. And so what we're going to do is, I'm just, I hope I'm not making you dizzy here with all the scrolling, but I'm just gonna scroll up and we're going to do our select all again. So Command or Control and the letter A, select our whole document. And as you can see, the font name here and the font size have disappeared. That's because we're using multiple fonts and font sizes throughout the document. So we can just click the little arrow here next to where the font name is supposed to be. And we can find Times New Roman here. You may have to scroll if you don't see it. Uh, if you haven't used it recently, it may not appear here at the top. So you may have to scroll and there are lots of fonts to scroll through. So it may take you a moment to find your font. Since I've used it recently, it's near the top. We need the 12 point size, so we're going to do that. And it has changed everything to Times New Roman 12 point. You can leave your chapter titles and chapter numbers bold if you like. I've seen differing opinions on that. Some publishers don't want the chapter titles and numbers bolded, some don't care. Check your submissions guidelines to find out which is the case. We have our chapter title and number flush left here, and that's not what we want. We want that centered. Now we do not want to use the space bar or the tab key to center. If you use the document to pull it into formatting software, it can cause lots of problems, plus publishers can tell. It's also just super hard to center using the space bar or the tab key. Let me show you. All these blue dots indicate that I have attempted to use the space bar to center my chapter title here. And if I use the tab key, it moves it over a number of spaces at a time to try to center it. The problem is we're just guessing at whether this is actually centered, plus using the space bar and the tabs can throw off the formatting in an app that you may be using to create the interior of your book for publication. So I'm going to get rid of all these extra spaces. And this is one of the reasons that having the hidden characters visible helps. I can't highlight the tabs for some reason. In earlier versions of Microsoft Word, even the most recent one before the latest update, it would show little arrows when you would hit the tab key. This one isn't, so I'm just gonna have to backspace. I backspaced once and it got rid of that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight both of these and use the alignment icons here. The one that's highlighted here is flush left. We want centered, so we'll just click center and we've centered our title and I'm just gonna scroll up and do the same with this one, center. Okay, now what if our book had more than one scene per chapter? or if we're writing a short story that has multiple scenes, what you'll need to do is let's pretend our scene break is going to go here. So we put our cursor at the end of the last line before the end of the scene and we hit enter. And now we have a blank line between our paragraphs and we don't want any anything more than this, just a single blank line will do. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll be using the pound symbol, but you can use an asterisk or a tilde if you prefer. Now, as I said earlier, the we would want to place a space between each of our scene break symbols. There's a reason for that. If you don't place a space between them and you happen to hit return, you get this weird line in the middle of your manuscript and that's not good. The only way that I've found that's really efficient in getting rid of a line like this is right away use the undo shortcut on a Mac, hold Command, and on a PC, Control, and the letter Z. And there we go. So Command Z or Control Z if you're on a PC. Now we do have a blank line we don't need, so I'm going to backspace there. And I'm going to fix this with some spaces between our symbols. You don't need a space after this last one because that'll throw off our centering. So then I'm going to highlight this and use our centering icon. The next thing I want to take care of, I think, is the line spacing. Now, lots of times people have trouble with this because they will have unintended extra space between paragraphs. Our text here is all single spaced. However, we do have extra space between our paragraphs and we don't have a hard return, which would indicate that we've used the enter key to go to the next paragraph. This would be what that looks like. But how do we have this extra space between our paragraphs? First of all, 
I'm going to select the entire document, so Control or Command A. And then I'm going to go up to this little icon here, which is our line and paragraph spacing icon. Click the little arrow next to it. And as you can see with these numbers, this indicates our line spacing. We are set to single spaced. We don't want that. We want double. Well, now it looks really weird because we've got this huge gap between the chapter number and the chapter title and then between each paragraph. So how do we fix it? Well, I'm keeping everything selected. I'm going to click this little arrow next to the line and paragraph spacing icon again and go to line spacing options. And that will give you a pop-up window that we're going to use quite a bit here in our document. The first thing we want to do is go down to the spacing section. We have several different sections. Mostly what we're going to use today is indentation and spacing. So under the spacing, we see line spacing is set to double. But what I want you to notice here is this section that has before and after. This will add what they call padding or extra space before and after a paragraph. This puts a certain number of points, which is how they measure font size, between your, your paragraphs. So right now we have six points before and 12 points after. Our paragraphs. These little arrows will let you change that. So we're going to set both of these to zero. So let's hit OK and that will apply this to our entire document like so. Now as you can see we don't have any space between paragraphs but our paragraphs are still not indented. Now this first one actually I had used the space bar to indent this paragraph. We do not want to use the space bar. We do not want to use the tab key either. Although using the tab key makes it look correct it could mess up your formatting. So so we're going to get rid of those and I'll show you how to do this with our line and paragraph spacing settings. So we don't want to indent our chapter titles or our scene breaks. They won't be truly centered if we indent those. So what I'm going to do here is just select each section of paragraphs at a time and then the little arrow next to our favorite icon, the line and paragraph spacing and choose line spacing options. This time we want to look at the indentation section. First of all, make sure that left and right indentation are set to zero. And what that means is that there is no extra indentation inside our margins on the left or right. We still have our one inch margins, as you can see over here looking on the left, we have some white space between the outside of our document and our text. But we want the left and right indentation set to zero so it will be all the way over to the safe zone within our margins. If we indent it more than that, then not only will our paragraph, the first line indent, but all the text will indent. Like for example in a block quotation or if you're formatting a letter that a character receives in your book and you want to put the text of the letter inside the manuscript, you would want to change the indentation of your left and right margins so that it is set in on both sides so that it will stand out in the manuscript. But otherwise, this should be set to zero. Now, special indentation will indent certain parts of a paragraph. Right now, it's set to none. And so we can see that the first lines of our paragraphs are even with the rest of the text. We want the paragraphs indented. So under special, we're going to click the drop down arrow and we're going to select first line. And then the default in Microsoft Word is normally set to 0 0.5, which is half an inch. And that's what we want. If it's set to something else, use these two little arrow keys to adjust the sizes. And down here in the little preview window, it's going to show you what the change will look like. For instance, if you just watch this down here as I change it back to none for special, and you see that the paragraph indentation goes away. So let's do special first line, half inch, click OK, and it has indented our paragraphs. I'm going to go ahead and do this to the rest of our document, but I'll skip ahead so you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, we're back up at the top of our document. If you don't have your scene breaks in place, or if you don't want to do this section by section, you can just do this to your entire document and then go back and on your chapter titles, just highlight the title or your scene breaks and go back to your line and paragraph spacing options and click none under special for those specific sections. All right, so if you are submitting to traditional publishers, there are a few other formatting requirements that you need to observe. And one of those is the header. To create a header, we, we need to click somewhere at the top. Now we can see this kind of grayed out paragraph symbol here. That shows up only because we have our invisible characters visible. So let's turn that off and we no longer can see where the header is supposed to go. I'm just gonna click up here in the general vicinity of the top of the document and double, triple click until this little close symbol shows up. This means we are in the header area of the document. The rest of our document is sort of grayed out or muted. 
that's because that's not the section that is selected. Also, we can see our footer area is selected as well. So header and footer, we can work in those two areas while our document looks like this. It took us into a new ribbon because we're in the header, but we're just gonna create this manually. So I'm going to go back to home and make sure our font is set to Times New Roman 12 point. So we need our last name and a slash with no space. And then our book title, this is Keeper of Shadows. So I'm just gonna type that, but we want that in all caps. Slash and then how many words? I think it was 139,000 words. Now we have our header. I'm going to click out of that. So I'm just gonna click anywhere in my document. Oops. And the easiest way I've found to create page numbers is to go to insert. And then over here we have page number, the little icon kind of, there's a little drop down arrow next to that. And I'm going to click page number. Here we can choose where the page number is going to be located. The default is bottom of the page footer. We don't want that. We want top of the page in the header and we want it on the right side. And we can choose whether to have the page number show up on the first page or not. I'm choosing to show the page number on the first page, so I'll leave this box checked. And this is what it looks like, and it does affect the rest of our document because it's going to move everything down the page a little. So I'm going to go back to home and reveal our invisible characters again just so we can see what's going on. We have used the enter key to go to the next page and it has really pushed our beginning of our chapter two quite a ways down the page. For the most part publishers do still want the chapter to start one third of the way down the page. We just place our cursor at the beginning of the line with the chapter number or title and we hit the enter key. Since we have our line spacing set to double space we can do that six times. Our chapter two is already a ways down the page but check out what happened. Since we did move our chapter one down the page then our text for chapter one is extending onto the next page. Originally it didn't so we have these hard returns where I hit enter to go to the next page. But now chapter two starts farther down the page with some text from chapter one still on the same page. We want chapter two on a page by itself. Let's get rid of all these extra lines, first of all. Okay, now we have the end of chapter one and then we have chapter two. What we wanna do is place our cursor at the very end after the final punctuation of chapter one, but on the same line. And we're going to go to insert and we're going to choose page break. And now we have a symbol that shows us that we have a page break and we have nothing after this. We don't have any symbols like paragraph symbols showing the, that we've hit the enter key. It's just blank. We do have an extra line here, which we can double click or triple click that and hit the delete key and get rid of that. Now chapter two starts at the very beginning of the next page. Now, if I were to add something to chapter one, here's the beauty of using a page break. If I just add a bunch of gibberish and some more here, Let's just add a few lines of gibberish. If we didn't use a page break, it's going to scoot chapter two down more on the next page. But look at this. It does not. It stays in place. Now we need to move chapter two a third of the way down the page as well. So we're going to place our cursor at the beginning of the chapter number and hit return six times and voila. If you haven't done so already, be sure to sign up for my free workshop, Six Essential Elements of a Powerful Story. Remember, click the link in the description or visit b2writercoaching.com slash workshop. For this week's Power Up, open your manuscript using Microsoft Word, enable the Invisible Characters button, and check for any formatting issues that don't align with standard manuscript format. Use this video or the notes you've taken while watching it to correct any issues you might find. If you have any questions about any of the things we've covered today, be sure to leave me a comment also. As I mentioned earlier in this video, these techniques that we've covered aren't designed to make your pages look the way they will once your book is published. Though you can use Microsoft Word to format the interior of your book for publication and save that file as a PDF, which you would upload to your publishing platforms, I think instead it is better to use a dedicated formatting tool that is designed for this purpose. The one I prefer to use is called Vellum. This software is only accessible for Mac users, unfortunately. It will help you beautifully format your story into an ebook or print book. There are, of course, other options available, including free ones. I would suggest just Google interior book formatting software.
If you are interested in checking out Vellum, I have a link for it in the description. Standard manuscript format provides a framework for your book's appearance, but what about the story itself? Is there a framework we can use to make sure the plot holds up and the character's journey works? Check back next week when we'll discuss seven vital plot elements every story needs in order to be complete and keep readers engaged. Remember, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss it. The tips I've shared today will help you no matter how you choose to publish. If you're not sure which publishing path is best for you and your story, check out this video. And let's power up your storytelling.